let's start. Hello, everybody. So we're here to, to talk about Depsy, which is a tool made in OVH to compute the QS of our customers and our architecture. So I'm Nicolas Quackfer. I present you Antonio Lea. We are two Python developers in OVH, and we built Depsy. First of all, the good news, uh, the project has been released this week on GitHub uh, for the first time, so you can retrieve it using this URL on the OVH account. Don't hesitate to take a look, and give us your feedback, and uh, if you want, uh, we, we can improve it using it. So during the, the next 25 minutes, we are going to explain you the objectives of the project, why we decided to build the Depsy. Then we'll talk about why we need a graph dependency in this project and what is the link between computing a QS. Then most, uh, the most interesting part for you as Python developer will be, will be how can we compute the QS uh, our, our customers using different methods like the rule QS, the operation QS, and the aggregation QS. And to finish, we'll see how we can use Airflow uh, to schedule tasks every night and compute the QS for our customers each day. So first part, the objectives. Anthony and I are, are Python developers in the web hosting team of OVH, a French cloud provider. And uh, we manage around, our team manage around 5 million websites, uh, which are distributing between around 14,000 servers. Uh, most of the case, everything is okay, of course, but sometimes we can have a crash of one or more services. And even if uh, we have some load balance systems, uh, maybe sometimes uh, some users can be I impacted. So the objective of the project is simple. We need to compute the QS, so the quality of service, of every website, of all the five uh, million websites. Um, the quality of service is uh, uh, QS is a simple percentage, which saying if 100% uh, everything is okay, it's not the case, it's not okay. Uh, it, it's not enough. In case of bad QS for a particular day, we also need to find the root causes of the root case. So we need to find what servers between these 14,000 servers um, have impacted my customers and why? So it's uh, the objective. And the next part present by uh, Anthony will present it uh, will be around the graph part of the project. Okay. So the first thought uh, for the project was to get the HTTP status code of every website hosted uh, by OVH. But it's, it's a bit complicated. It's not really handy. And uh, sometimes it's uh, even the customer's code which is not working. So it's not our, our infrastructure. And of course, in Depsy, as I, uh, um, Nicolas told, we want to know the root causes. So the idea of Depsy is to use dependency graph to find the root causes. Uh, for example, dot com, uh, we can imagine this kind of uh, architecture. Uh, when the old nodes are working fine, the website is up. But if a website, uh, if the DBS is not working anymore, the database is not working, and the website will be done. So we can both find the root causes and also get a QS for uh, example.com. In order to, to get a graph uh, in Depsy, we are using No4G, which is a graph-oriented database. And uh, we are using Kafka, which is a queue, uh, in order to handle the messages, especially for the web hosting team. We are populate the graph in real time. We have uh, orders constantly. and the uh, infrastructure is uh, is moving, so we have a Python uh, consumer which is our uh, currently handling messages, and which is our uh, uh, validate and reformat the message in order to um, populate the Neo4j database uh, with this kind of graph. We have uh, currently millions of nodes and uh, relationships in Depsy, and it is growing. So this time it's about the rule QS. Okay, so Anthony explained 
why we need a grave dependency uh, in the depth of project and uh, how we can handle the messages and uh, transform it in, um, in nodes in Neo4j. Now uh, you can ask us why, uh, what is the link between a graph dependency and uh, the QS, how to compute the QS from some nodes in our Neo4j database. In fact, there is a uh, two case. Uh, we have lots of nodes in our Neo4j and for certain nodes, we have probes that are running and um, checking something like the, the CPU, like the RAM, like uh, the ping, the response time from the ping. Lots of uh, things to check and uh, to see if server, so the node, is okay. These things are sent to time series database. Uh, so we have graph like, I present it later, sorry. So uh, you already know uh, what is a time series database is. We can have some information about metrics uh, to see if our servers are okay, are okay or not. It's the first case and we will see together how we can use world QS for it. Another case is the, web, the, the node cannot be monitored. For example, a website cannot be monitored by a probe saying, checking the, the HTTP statue code because we cannot guarantee the, the code. Maybe the user itself can raise it an error. So in this case, we will not use time series database, but we'll use its own parent QS to build its QS. In this case, we are talking about operation QS and aggregation QS. So let's start with the world QS and uh, using this simple schema. We want to uh, compute the QS of the website here, which depends on just two dependencies, which are a storage server and a web server. Next, we'll see that we also want to compute the QS of a group of websites using a label name offer. We are talking about the filer um, part using a word QS. It's the graph I wanted to, to show you before. Uh, you know it, it's a Grafana picture showing some dash dashboards taken from the official website. And the idea of uh, the word QS is really simple. We need to analyze some data points and, for example, if these data points are above a, a given threshold, we can say during this moment the QS is not given for our user. So we are going to decrease the QS. Here is a, for a server named filer01. Uh, it's the response time for the ping and we can see there is two problems. Here it's a representation of some data points. Of course, we are computing the QS every day, so there is just small, uh, a few, uh, I, I, I say uh, 10 data points, but there is lots of data points in uh, one day. And we can see for six data points, the, the, the QS, uh, the, the response time is above a certain uh, threshold, so the QS must decrease during this time. We can have another type of check which in the in interval, and it's uh, the same uh, method, but we also analyze a button threshold. So the ID, we'll see some Python code. The ID is to convert the previous uh, picture, which is time series containing values, into a time series containing Boolean's value. So just two values, true, false, and I don't know if it, yes. Here, when I have a problem, I transform it into false values. How to do it? It's the, the table representation, not really interesting, but you can see we, we transform some values into Boolean representation. And it's uh, the module we use. Uh, you, you, certainly you know Panda, it's a, meta, it's a module to, to analyze and manipulate some data using some data structures like series and data frames. And here, we can use it to simply transform. It's the first step. We also show you some other steps later. The first step is to transform, you can see over there, a dictionary of timestamp values. In the keys, it's timestamps. In the values, it's the response time of the ping. We transform it in Boolean values, just by here transforming, transforming the, the data points into series, a panda series. And then we apply for each, each data, we apply a simple function. Here is just a lambda saying everything that is above the given threshold is uh, 20. 
uh, will be converted into false values. So we transform Booleans, uh, um, time series values into uh, Booleans values. Okay, okay. And it is the result. You can see in the picture of Depsy, we analyzed, up, we analyzed time, uh, metric in time series database and convert it into a QS. So here you can say me, uh, I just have Booleans data and it's not a QS, it's not a float number and how can we transform it in, in this kind of number? Anthony will just show you uh, how to do it. Okay, thanks. So in order to get a QS, we have several steps. Uh, first of all, just imagine the website. We don't have metrics actually. Uh, we have metrics for Fiverr, Apache, but we don't have metrics for our website. But we, we want the QS because it's uh, customer websites. So the QS of the website is, uh, is a combined between the, the QS on the Fiverr and the Apache. Here is the end operation between both of them. So when the dependency is not working, um, one, on the, one of them, sorry, is not working, the website will be done. Uh, we have uh, the booleans uh, for the failures of Apache, but uh, we can compute uh, uh, the booleans for the example.com like that. So uh, in Pandas, we have the two series uh, for the Fiverr and the Apache, and we want to merge the two series into a data frame. Uh, just consider this subset of data. Uh, we don't have uh, the same uh, timestamps uh, for the values, so when we merge the two, the both uh, series, the, there are some gaps. Uh, um, sorry. Uh, yep, here, no, with the NAND value. So, because the props are not sending the metrics uh, in the same time, so it's really uh, a real life example actually. Uh, we don't want gaps. Uh, in Depsy, we are applying a forward filling and back filling operation between the, the rows. And uh, as you can see, uh, in the previous table, you have an AND value, and here we just put the false in the next rows. And when we have a NAND in the first rows, we can put with a backfill operation the true here. Then we don't have any more gaps, it's good. And we can apply the AND operation between the, the columns. And we can have this result, for example, dot com. So in Pandas, you have a data frame with full rows with no gaps and the end operation. Now we want to just keep the changing state actually uh, because uh, this is just true and false. So we can just uh, reduce the amount of data, especially for our next computation. I will speak uh, about that later. And in order to compute the QS, we want the duration. So we apply a group by operation and the sum, and we can get, we can get the duration for both false and true. It's, it's a very small subset here, but uh, in DEPC, we mostly compute for 20 hours. Uh, so now with the true period and then with the, f the, the total of the periods, we can compute the QS, the real, the real deal. And uh, yeah. just uh, excuse me, just a note before. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I talked about uh, the whole QS, and we just finished uh, showing a Boolean time series and, and uh, wh what is the link between a Boolean time, time series and a real QS. Uh, Anthony, just show it. Uh, in fact, when you want to check. Um, the, the QS of a server, you don't just check uh, the ping like uh, we, we show. Um, you also check lots of other things. And in this case, you, you can have lots of metrics. You can transform all of these metrics between, uh, in Booleans metric, metric and then apply a hand, for example, uh, on it. And in this case, it's the, the exact uh, same algorithm we applied to compute a QS for uh, a role QS. Sorry. Okay, so uh, we have also 
the orb operation uh, uh, available in Debsi, and the ratio and the at least uh, operation. No, the aggregation QS is uh, for the offer because uh, sometimes we don't want the, uh, the end or the or, the at least, and the other operation that I uh, showed you. We, we want the average operation, for example. We, there is no value if uh, a website for the premium offer is done, all the website for the premier, uh, premium offer should be done. It's not uh, really uh, relevant. So we can compute the average for the nodes and also the mean and the max for the nodes. That's uh, for offer, it's very useful. Now I will let Nicolas to talk about the airflow. Okay, so uh, we're seeing together how uh, we can push data into a graph databases and uh, how we can compute uh, the QS for each of the nodes depending, depending of if the node has um, data, data to analyze in time series database or not, and in this case we analyze its parent QS. Now it's time to assemble a uh, whole of it and use a scheduler to compute the QS of our customers every night because uh, in OVH and in the web hosting team, we compute the QS for each day. And so we use uh, Airflow as uh, the scheduler. Airflow is a task scheduler. Uh, it's like a cron plus plus, uh, written in Python and uh, made by um, uh, Airbnb. Uh, it's now in the Apache Foundation. And uh, it's a workflow or pipeline, uh, if you prefer. Uh, it manages some dependencies. So you can, you can view to the right of the screen here. We have some tasks to be done before some other task. And we can also have some task running in parallel. And this task is waiting the result of the other task. The um, best practice is to have a um, hidden potent task. Um, so uh, here is the web server of Airflow. Uh, why we decided to, to use Airflow to build our QS is for many reasons and the features of uh, Airflow, which is if any uh, task fail for a reason or another, we can fix the problem and retry it using a CLI or using um, the, the web server. We can also have access to this great web UI and have the logs of everything uh, because during the night we sleep, of course. Excuse me? No, not yet. We do not have a on call, but uh, we, we hope to, to have it. Uh, excuse me? Yeah, of course, I don't sleep. <laughs> So, um, okay, um, how Airflow can know uh, the, the task to launch and uh, if uh, sometimes he must to launch world QoS or sometimes he must to launch operation QoS or aggregation. In fact, it's uh, the user which tell to DEPC how to do it uh, using this simple JSON configuration. So in the interface of WebUI or using the API, IPA, the user telling us uh, he needs to use uh, world, uh, world QS for Apache and Filer, uh, no, an aggregation for the offer, and an operation for uh, the website using the Filer and Apache nodes in the Web UI representation. And to finish, just a few notes about how to create a DAG in uh, Airflow. A DAG is a group of tasks which will be done uh, the one after the other. Here, it's really a simple DAG. If you want to have the complete code, of course, you can go to the GitHub uh, repository and uh, see the slash uh, scheduler uh, folder. Here, we just declare um, a DAG. Uh, the owner is Depsy. And the start date is uh, first of the year. So uh, if I launch Airflow today, uh, Airflow will, will, will uh, fill back every task for every day uh, until the first of January. Uh, then I declare, I declare my DAG here, naming uh, Compute Acme QS. And here, I think you recognize it. It's a cron, um, a cron uh, format. 
to say my dog must be lunch every night at this uh, hour, one hour and 15 minutes. Here, it's not really important, it's uh, just uh, an example of some task, but uh, in the repository of GitHub, you can see the complete code. It's for a compute rule, QS, operation QS, and aggregation QS. And here, if it's okay, yeah. Here, it's uh, the, the interesting part of how to create a DAG using Airflow. Uh, over there, hello, here, I create four tasks for my, um, my four labels, so Apache, Apache, uh, Filer, website, and offer. And over there, I create a Python operator. In fact, when you use Airflow, uh, you can want to, to launch tasks uh, doing some jobs. For example, you can want to launch a bash script. You can want to, 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 launch, to send a mail to, to happen a row in the database. And for each kind of need, Airflow provides us an operator. In our case, uh, in uh, DevC, we just use the Python operator. You can see over there, I create my task here using the Python operator. And Python operator provides me an attribute named Python callable. In this case, the Python callable here is compute rule, compute rule, operation, and aggregation. Okay? Um, uh, a cool feature of Airflow is that DAG can be created dynamically using Python code. So here, it's, it's sort of static because I, I created the Python callable, the compute rule, the compute rule, etc. I mean, let's imagine that uh, Airflow parse, parse the, um, our code, our DevC code using Airflow, parse the user configuration and create dynamically this code. And to finish here, it's uh, how we can say um, to Airflow uh, the order of the task. We can see here, these two tasks will be launched together. So in parallel, using some worker, for example. And once they will, done, they will be done, the website task can be launched. And then, after the website task, it will be the offer task. Uh, here we use some bitwise operators, but you can also use some methods like set upstream or set downstream. Um, and the result in Depsy is the following. You can see over there, over there it's the, the Airflow interface. And here we see our DAG using four tasks, Apache, Filer, Website, and Offer. And the DAG is launched every night for every team. Here is just for the Hackme team. But uh, we have the, the web hosting team, we have the, the storage team, etc. in OVH. And each of the team has its own DAG. And here is the result of the Depsy interface displaying the QS, uh, the evolution of the QS, of the filer of the Apache, etc. So we are done with Debsy, and if you have any question, uh, we'll answer it with pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>